congratulating him. They go back. So I was paralyzed. <laughs> so then a Jewish woman, probably she recognized me, I don't know that I'm not a Jew. She embraced me, go, go, it doesn't do you any good, go, go. So we left the house. Then we left the ghetto. So then he said, you didn't see everything, you didn't see too much. Would you like to go again? I will go with you. I want you to see everything. Next day we went again, the same house, the same way. So then again, now I was more conditioned. So I felt other things. Stench, stench, dirt, stench. Everywhere, suffocating. Dirt. Streets, nervousness, tension, some bedlam. This was Platz Muranowski. In a corner of it, some children playing something with some rugs, throwing the rugs to another. He says, they are playing as you see. Life goes on, life goes on. So then I said, they are simulating playing, they don't play. It was a special place for playing? In the corner of Platz Muranowski. No, 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 open. So I say they there are... Were trees? There were a few trees, Rashidic trees. So then we just walked the streets. We didn't talk to anybody. We walked probably one hour. Sometime he would tell me, looked at this Jew, a Jew standing, without moving. I said, is he dead? He says, no, 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 he's alive. Mr. Witold, remember, he's dying. He's dying. Look at him. Tell them over there. You saw it, don't forget. We walk again. It's macabre. Only from time to time, he would whisper, Remember this? Remember this? Or he would tell me, look at her. Very many cases. I would say, what are they doing here? His answer, they are dying. That's all right, they are dying. Then always, but remember, remember? We spend more. Perhaps one hour we left the cat. Frank and I couldn't take it more. Get me out of it. And then I never saw him again. I was sick. I don't, I even know, I don't want, I understand your role, I am here. I don't go back in my memory. I couldn't take any more. But I reported what I saw.
Yes, it was not a world. It was not a part of humanity. I was not part of it. I did not belong there. Yet. I never saw such things. I never... Nobody wrote about this kind of reality. I never saw any theater. I never saw any movie. This was not the world. I was told that these are human beings. They didn't look like human beings. And we left. He embraced me then. Good luck, good luck. I never saw him again. Sie haben keine Erinnerung von dieser Zeit? Sehr wenig. Ich kann mich erinnern, Werktouren vor dem Krieg besser als an die ganze Kriegszeit und auch als diese Zeit in Warschau. Nicht? Denn das ist irgendwie war das doch eine bedrückende, eine schlechte Zeit. Eindeutig, dass der Mensch schlechte Zeiten, Gott sei Dank, leichter vergisst als schöne Erinnerungen. Die sind verdrängt, nicht? Ich werde Sie helfen zu erinnern. Sie waren in Warschau der äh, Assessor von äh, Dr. Auerswald. Ja. Dr. Auerswald war... Äh, Kommissar für den jüdischen Wohnbezirk in Warschau. Dr. Grassler, das ist Tscherniakow Tagebuch. Er schreibt über Sie. Ach, die sind gedruckt, existieren die? Ja, ja, ja. er hat ein Tagebuch äh, mhm, ja. geschrieben und das ist nur jetzt veröffentlicht. Er schreibt und das ist 7. Juli 1941. Am 7. Juli 1941, das erste Mal, dass ich ein Datum selber wieder erfahre. Ja. Darf ich mir da ein Zettel nehmen? Das, ich, mein, ich hätte natürlich genug da, nicht? aber das interessiert mich auch. Nicht? Denn ich habe nie, also dann war ich im Juli schon dort. Ja, und er schreibt Juli 1741, morgen in dem Gemeinde, das heißt jüdische Gemeinde, ja, ja, ne? und später mit Auerswald Schlosse. Schlosser war... Und Grassler. Ja. Gewöhnliche Sache. Das ist das erste Mal, dass Sie... Äh das ist der Name erwähnt wird, ja. 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 Aber da war man also anscheinend zu, zu dritt. Schlosser war, glaube ich, Wirtschaftsverwaltung. Also ja. der Name ist mir noch in Erinnerung, dass der mit der Wirtschaft zu tun ja, hat. Ja. Und äh, das äh, zweite Mal... Das ist äh, Juli 22.
Hat er jeden Tag festgehalten? Ja. Ja? Mhm. Ja, jeden Tag. Jeden Tag. Da das ist ja sehr äh, erstaunlich. Dass das gerettet worden ist. Ne? Erstaunlich, dass das gerettet worden ist. Arab Chanyakov began keeping a diary the very first week of the war before the Germans entered Warsaw and before he took over the responsibility of leading the Jewish community and kept his diary in daily entries until the afternoon of the day that he ended his life. He left us a window through which we can observe a Jewish community in the terminal hours of its life, be a dying community, for it began dying from the beginning. And in that sense, Arab Chanyakov uh, did something very important. He didn't save the Jews. In that respect, he was like other Jewish leaders. But he left the record of what had happened to them in a day-by-day -day fashion. And you could see that he did all this on top of working a seven-day week, for he was a man without vacations, without any day off. And yet every day, Uh, almost every day, he had an entry. He might record the weather, where he went in the morning, and then all the things that happened. But he never failed to write. That was something that moved him, pushed him, compelled him throughout the years, almost three years, of his life under the Germans, And in that sense, uh, perhaps because he wrote in such a prosaic style, we now know what went on in his mind, how things were perceived, recognized, reacted to. And we even know from what he didn't say, just what it is that went through this community. There are constant references in the diary to the end. He talks in terms of Greek mythology, and he refers to himself as wearing a poisoned cloak, as Hercules once did. He has uh, a feeling of doom for the Jews of Warsaw. And there are remarkable passages in the diary that illustrate what he meant. He is uh, sarcastic enough, if that is the word, in December 1941 to remark that now the intelligentsia were dying also. Up to this point, poor people were dying. But in, by December 1941, members of the intelligentsia were starving to death. And he even has... Why does he mention specifically the intelligence at this time? He mentions it because there is a difference owing to the class structure within the ghetto in vulnerability to starvation. Uh, the lower classes died first. The middle class died a little bit later. Intelligentsia were, of course, at the top of the middle class. And once they started dying, the situation was really, very, very bad. And that's the meaning of that. Now, we're dealing with a ghetto where the average consumption was about 1,200 calories, you see. He mentions it with...